Hello, how's it going? So I want to make a video about horsepower and torque because I think horsepower is stupid and everybody is always talking about horsepower and how important it is and I think there's a lot of misconceptions especially in the automotive world about horsepower and its sort of precedence over torque when really they're very interrelated and torque for the most part is a lot more important to people than they think it is so anyways I figure we just jump right into some numbers and see what we can sort of figure out so power to begin with any kind of power is just the amount of work you're doing over a unit time right this is just gonna be a big physics class by the way work as I'm sure you remember from grade 10 is force times distance so that means that horsepower, or any kind of power, is just equivalent to some force traveling over a distance per unit time. All right. Now, horsepower is, that, that, that's all it is, whether you're talking about watts or horsepowers or anything, it's simply the amount of work you're doing per unit time. It's not necessarily how effective that work is or anything, it's just a straight measure, like a light bulb. A hundred watt light bulb. A watt is a unit of power, just like horsepower. A watt is one joule per second. All right. So this is the amount of work you're doing, one joule, which is equal to a newton of force over a meter of distance per second. So a watt is the same as a horsepower. It's it's just how much power in, in terms of a car, that's probably the analogy I'll use this entire time. The horsepower is how much power you're generating. Like it's just it's a measure, that's all. It's not how quick your car accelerates, it's not how fast it feels when you're driving down going to the grocery store. It's just a measure of how much power it can put out. Literally, that's all. It's a measure. It's like measuring the heat off a light bulb or the power going into it. It's just the amount of work that's being done per unit time. Now torque on the other hand, torque is what is what you feel. Right? Torque is a force times a distance. So in case of automotive, we're usually talking foot pounds. So for every foot of lever arm you have, if you apply one pound at the end, that's one foot pound of torque. Right? It is the torque in your car that really gets you going. That's what you feel in your butt when you put you know, a turbo or a nitrous or a supercharger or a big V8 or something with a lot of power, it's making a lot of power because that torque is making it spin quickly. All right, now I'm gonna, I know it's a little weird what I'm doing, but it's all gonna, it's all gonna come together pretty quickly. So if we look at work again, or sorry, power, power is equal to work over time, which is equal to force times distance over time. All right, that's what it all comes down to. The key is that this force comes from the torque, not from the horsepower. The horsepower is simply related to it because the horsepower is simply the work over time. All right, so if we actually try to derive horsepower itself, we know that we need to have some certain force times a distance over time. So if we're looking at it, we know that the force we're going to be having is going to be equal to our torque divided by some lever arm, right? For example, if we had 100 foot-pounds of torque and a 10-foot lever, this pencil's being weird, and a 10-foot lever, we're going to have 10 pounds of force on the end of that lever, right? So our force is equal to the torque divided by a distance. Now the distance itself, we know that our force equals torque over radius. The distance itself is equal to, in the case of an engine, it's easy, easy to think of it as the distance is traveling around a circle, all right? So if we look at the flywheel, on a car. Let's go up here. There's some torque 
driving this flywheel. That flywheel has a certain diameter, and we want to know how far around the force from that torque is traveling. Right, that, that's, the, that's the distance it's going. Go back to high school again, you know the distance around a circle is 2 pi r. So that means that our distance is equal to 2 pi times whatever our radius is. Now, the beauty of this is that it doesn't matter how big your flywheel is because if the flywheel gets smaller, the torque will only go up, right? Because it's torque divided by r. So if the r gets smaller, the force goes up. So that top it's just going to end up canceling out. If we look at our force times distance, <clears throat> if we look at our force times distance, it's just going to be our torque over r times 2 pi r, and the r's cancel out. So force times distance is just equal to torque times 2 pi. Right? So that's the top part of our power equation. As for the bottom part, in the case of an engine, our only real measurement of time for what it's doing is our, our RPM, right? RPM literally means revolutions per minute, so we could put it as revolutions per minute, which is just some number of revolutions times that 2 pi r divided by a time. So we can manipulate that to use it in the bottom of our formula. So if we actually want force times distance over time, if we end up multiplying this by RPM, that's the equivalent of doing our tau times 2 pi times some number of revolutions over time per minute, right? Finally, we, we worked out after some useless gibberish that power, which is equal to force times distance over time, in the case of our automotive application, which is all I'm really talking about, is equal to the big pencils are awful. That's a fact. Zebra. You want zebra pencils. Is equal to our torque. times 2 pi times the revolutions per minute. All right, which seems a little weird because there's nothing on the bottom. I said in the very beginning that the units need to be some force times a distance divided by a unit time. I always notice this camera just doesn't focus on anything. I hope that's not annoying. But if we look at the units here, torque is in uh, foot pounds. 2 pi is a constant, it's meaningless. RPM is equivalent to basically just per minute, which is the same as foot pounds per time, which is the same as force times the distance times time. So, story checks out. Power is equivalent to torque times 2 pi times the RPM. When it comes to horsepower itself, horsepower is simply some fun unit of of that of of power. It's this what we're doing right now. If you're using that's it. I'm flipping the page over. It's happening. If we're using torque times two pi times RPM, our actual unit is in foot-pounds per minute. Now there's a conversion. Horsepower, when it was originally derived, was, I don't know, I imagine he was probably towing a horse around a circle with some radius and they, they worked this all out, but it turns out that one horsepower is equal to 33,000 foot-pounds 
per minute. Okay. So when they originally tied their horse to some sled that goes around in a circle, they put some amount of weight on it, and there was a certain radius on that arm around the circle, and it took them a certain amount of time, and that's what it works out to. One horse could tow around 33,000 foot-pounds worth of work per minute. So, that means that horsepower itself is equal to torque in foot-pounds, which is what we measure from, from dynamometers to begin with, times 2 pi times our RPM divided by 33 thousand and that gives it to you in units of horsepower. Now you can convert that to watts or anything you want. It's simply a measure of the work being done. The real driver of that work, which is the point I'm trying to hammer home here, is that it's the torque that's making all this happen. The torque is what's really pushing you forward. It's what's propelling you. All right, if you have a wheel in your car and the wheel is being driven by a drive shaft that comes back to a differential and does some fun stuff, there's a certain torque spinning that wheel around. That torque has an arm, all right? And if you take the distance of that arm and divide it by the torque, it's gonna give you a certain force. And that force is the tire pushing back on the road. And because you have grip, because you're not slipping, you have traction, that force is being pushed right back on you. And it turns out that this becomes an instant center. This force goes up here and pushes you forward, and that's what's propelling your car. So it's not the horsepower that's making you go fast, it's the torque. The horsepower is simply a measure of how quickly that torque is making your wheels spin. Now there's something interesting that happens here. If we work all this out, I forget what it is, I think it's 52, 52, 52, yeah, that's what it works out to. If you just take 33,000 over 2 pi, you get about 52.52, which means that horsepower is equal to torque times RPM over 52.52, which simplifies this a lot, but it really kind of shows you that horsepower is simply a function of torque and RPM which is exactly what it is. If you can keep the torque constant, all right, if you could somehow make a motor where the torque is completely linear over time, like that, then I can, if you're, or sorry, no, that was a lie, I'm bad at this. If you could have a motor where your torque is flat the whole way along, you have exactly 100 foot-pounds of torque. That means that as your RPM goes up, your horsepower would be a straight line like that, if that line was actually straight, all right? So horsepower is a function of torque and RPM. It's nothing by itself. It's not how fast you're going. It's simply a measure of how many RPMs that torque is making your motor do, in a sense. This is all very full of analogies that aren't making a ton of sense, but that's what I'm trying to show you. But if you look at this, The most interesting part of this, which is kind of what inspired me to do this, is that I just learned this and realized this for the first time after looking at, you know, dyno sheets for years and years and years and never putting it together. At 5,252 RPM, horsepower has to equal torque, right? If you rev your engine to 5,252, these two terms are going to cancel out, and horsepower must equal torque which I didn't believe until I went on the internet and actually tried to sort this out. And I'll just, what are we gonna do? I've been looking at turbo kits for, for Audis. And I know that APR has some nice, some nice dyno sheets on their website here. So let's, let's scope out some KO4 turbo kits for a B8 Audi A4. And let's look at their dyno sheets. Focus, come on. God, Android phones are the worst. I should get an iPhone. Now, if you look at any dyno sheet, you're always going to have 
Here, torque's in white, horsepower's in red. And you'll notice that as long as your engine's running high enough, there's always some point where torque crosses over RPM. Right? It happens there, it happens there, and you might notice that that's pretty much at the same spot. And if we go down, you'll find that that's happening at exactly 5,252 RPM every single time, which just blows my mind that I never realized that before. Let's find some more. Come on, Google, show us some dyno sheets. Look at any dyno sheet you want. Find the crossover of horsepower and torque. Look down, 5200 RPM, right there. Every single time, it's always 5200 RPM. I think that is the coolest thing in the world. And it just goes to show you how essentially meaningless horsepower is, or rather not that it's meaningless, but that there's a very, very distinct dependency between horsepower and torque, and that horsepower is simply a function of torque or Torque is a function of horsepower, whichever way you want to look at it is, is fine with me. But yeah, I mean, every single time, look at the crossover and look at the RPM. And I promise you, if this thing would focus, it's around 52.52. See that? Isn't that cool? Science. Science is cool. Anyways, I just thought that I would bring that up. I think it's neat. And you can see, I mean, the more, this is kind of a good example. The more flat line that torque is, which is the higher curve here on the left, when it's essentially flat in that middle section, you get a pretty linear increase in horsepower, and your horsepower only begins to drop when your torque begins to drop, right? Because given a constant torque, your horsepower is simply a line. It's just a function of RPM. It's just a, you know, y equals mx plus b straight line where your slope is defined by the torque itself. So, anyways, I think that's that's pretty cool. Next time you have your Honda Civic out and you're looking to do some, some upgrades, pay attention to the horsepower. It's important, but what you really care about is the torque. The torque is what's pushing your car forward. It's what's doing the real job. The horsepower is simply a measure of how much energy can be extracted from that torque spinning at a certain RPM. Essentially, the torque multiplied by the RPM gives you a horsepower, or gives you the horsepower, and that's what, that's what really matters. So, love the torque, not the horsepower.